Hello, everyone. It's Memorial Day 2024. And some of you noted in the comments of my other videos or got in touch with me that I haven't done any video in a while. And that's true. And many of you were worried. I would like to reassure you that nothing bad happened to me. I moved and picking up an entire lifetime from one place and moving it to another place is a really difficult thing to do. Also difficult in that I was leaving a city that I love so much, New York City. But that doesn't mean I won't be continuing to do videos about that city and about the Revolutionary War. Those are two subjects that are close to my heart, and I'll never stop talking about them. So I'm glad to be back, and I thought this holiday weekend would be a great weekend to return to you. So let's talk about Memorial Day. On Memorial Day, we're thinking about the soldiers who gave their lives in war for the United States of America. So me, being a Revolutionary War historian, would like to share some sites with you that honor men and some women who died during the Revolutionary War. But of course, officially, there were no women soldiers. So we have to say um, the soldiers who died during the Revolutionary War. Two of those sites I'm going to share with you are in New York City. And one of them is here near my new home in Northeastern Pennsylvania. So if you are ready, let's get started. Now the first site, actually both New York City sites I'm going to talk about today are in Brooklyn. So I think for the first time in my career, I'm gonna be talking about sites that are not in Manhattan that weren't on my old tour route. The first monument we're going to talk about is in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. It's the uh, Martyrs Memorial, um, which is in honor of the men who died in the Revolutionary War on the prison ships that were located in the East River. So in a little bay um, called Wallabout Bay in Brooklyn, the British anchored a number of decommissioned ships there during the Revolutionary War where they held prisoners of war. The most infamous of those ships was the Jersey. And uh, there's actually a survivor of the Jersey, Thomas Dring, who wrote a memoir of how he survived on that ship. And the story is just utterly horrifying. But nearly everyone who was held on those ships died. And Captain Dring talks about how every morning he would volunteer for the service to go up to the deck of the ship and throw off the bodies of the men who died during the night before. He said this would afford him an opportunity to get fresh air where normally he had none, only the sickening and stale air on the lower decks of the ships. But what the British did was decommission the ships. They would strip them from the inside. And some of them were warships, which meant on the lower decks, all they had were little tiny portals right where the cannon would have stuck out through for air and light to come in. And the men were so crowded in there, they could barely lay down. Um, Captain Dring says that, that when he arrived, it was nighttime, it was dark, and they just tossed him into one of these decks. And it was just a sea of humanity. He said the stench was overwhelming and made him sick. And it wasn't until the next morning that he saw the terrible condition of all the men being held there. And Dring went on to create a regimen for himself that guaranteed his survival. And I think he might be the only memoir of a survivor of the Jersey prison ship. But in total, there were five of those ships there. And if you were condemned there, you were literally condemned and died. As I mentioned, he volunteered to throw the bodies off of the deck in the morning. And that's what they did. They recovered the dead bodies overnight and threw them off the top of the boats into the East River on the Brooklyn side. Now, Ring said that many of these men died simply because they had given up. They had just lost all hope of survival and that he had developed this daily regimen that kept him going, um, different things he structured throughout his day to give him things to do that would keep him going. And one of the things he said he did was he bought from a peddler um, a little cauldron in which to boil his own meat because he felt that the men were getting sick from the common cauldron the cook on the ship was cooking in. So he did that and he did some other things. There were some things he wouldn't eat, um, some parts of the ship he wouldn't go to. And, and he did survive and left us this hair-raising memoir, and I will uh, link to it in the comments for you if you'd like to download it and read it. So the Soldiers Martyrs Memorial in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, is an honor to the men who died on those prison ships, and it's believed there were about 12,000 of those men. Now, after the Revolutionary War, the prison ships were moved out and time went by, and a number of those bodies started floating up to the top or were close enough to the shore that when the tide was low, the remains could be seen. And it was at that time that the Tammany Society, who you might know as Tammany Hall, raised the funds to remove all of those bodies and build the beautiful Soldiers Martyrs Memorial 
that is in Fort Greene today. If you walk up the steps to the monument, you'll see it surrounded by these four beautiful eagles. Inside the visitor center is an exhibit explaining the story of the prison ships. There are a number of artifacts on display from the time period, 1776, and there's also photos of the tomb located beneath the monument where the remains have been interred. And here's a picture of the uh, vault door leading to that internment site, um, which is no longer open to the public. Our next site is also in Brooklyn. Some of you might know this. This is the Old Stone House or the Cortelyu House in Brooklyn. And it's a beautiful old home built in the 1690s. And the Stone House is near to where one of the battles in the 1776 Battle for New York was held. And this is part of the overall Battle of Long Island, also called the Battle of Brooklyn. This was in August of 1776 as Washington's troops were being pushed through Brooklyn from where Staten Island is all the way around to where Brooklyn Heights is today. And they fought a series of battles through Brooklyn going through that area. Here at the Old Stone House, we honor the 400 Marylanders that were killed in their stand against the British and the Hessians during that Battle of Brooklyn. And every year in August, there is a commemorative event. Um, nearby on a hill, Washington watched this battle as the men were slaughtered. Um, many of them were trapped um, kind of in a swampy area and couldn't get out, and they were shot or bayoneted by British and Hessian troops. And it said that Washington stood on a nearby hill and he remarked, what fine men we lose this day. He was very sad about the losses, but those brave men who stood there and gave their lives enabled Washington's men to move on to Brooklyn Heights, where they later were able to escape into Manhattan. And um, so that's part of the overall battle of Brooklyn. So we have the wonderful stone house in Brooklyn, the Cortelyu house in honor of the 400 Marylanders who perished there so that Washington's army could escape and continue um, on to escape overall in um, New York. You might know that uh, Washington lost the overall Battle of New York, and it was a matter of him mainly fighting and escaping, fighting, retreating, until in November they got off the island. So another wonderful place for you to visit. The building is open. You can look it up. They have a museum inside about the history of the building and the battle that took place there. And of course, if you're in the New York City area, you should check out the commemoration that happens every August. And uh, I am generally there as Mrs. Q. I don't know if I'll be there this year. I might just take a trip there because it's a very important commemoration. So you just might see me there again this year. The third monument I'd like to talk about today is not far from my new home. It's in the Wyoming Valley of Pennsylvania, which you might know better as the scranton wilkes barre area. And uh, it is in a town called Wyoming. During the Revolutionary War, there were a series of forts here. This was considered the frontier at that time, part of the frontier. And there were a series of forts here. In 1778, the fort at Wyoming was engaged in a battle with the British and the native tribes who were allied with the British. And in this case, it was Mohawk and Seneca. So the war chiefs of the Mohawk and Seneca joined up with a British regiment known as Butler's Rangers. Um, they were American loyalists and 300 of them were killed at the Battle of Wyoming. And they weren't just killed in the battle, they were brutally massacred in the battle. So this is known as the Wyoming Massacre. And I'll be having much more to say about this massacre, <clears throat> excuse me, in the future as I am studying it currently myself to bring you an excellent and thorough video on what happened there. And that was July 3rd of 1778. So if you're in Northeastern Pennsylvania in the area and you've never seen it, it's really easy to find. Just put it in your NAB Wyoming Massacre Monument and you can head over and honor the men who died there in 1778. So today we're honoring the men who died on the prison ships anchored in Wallabout Bay, Brooklyn, and their monument at Fort Greene. We're honoring the 400 Marylanders who died in the Battle of New York, the Battle of Brooklyn, and their commemoration at the Old Stone House or Cartelu House in Brooklyn, and the men who perished in the Battle of Wyoming here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, honored at the Wyoming Monument here. So I hope you enjoyed that tribute. Please take some time this weekend to think about the soldiers who died in our very first war, the Revolutionary War, which allowed us to separate from Britain and create what today is the United States of America. 
I hope you enjoyed this, my first video for you from Northeastern Pennsylvania and my new um, my new office, which is really nice. I didn't have space for a nice big office like this in New York. If you liked this video, please like it so it'll get more engagement. Share it with your friends. Subscribe to my channel because I have a whole backlog of video to get out for you. Th thank you so much for joining me and enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. I hope you have your American flag out or maybe you have a Revolutionary War flag out as we do. Um, thank you so much. And I'm Karen Q, if you don't already know, and I will see you next time.